Every now and again, you get to do the episode you've always wanted to do, and today is that day. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I swear I want to I want to wave my hands in the air like I just don't care every time I hear that. Uh, welcome back. It's Locked on A's. I'm Wayne Coy. I'm your host. Those two guys in the little boxes you're going to get to meet in just a minute, Gabriel and Jared, uh, here with a great story about their project, which is called, we're giving away the lead here, but it's called Summer of Cell, and we'll tell you all about that. But I do need to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase the Jace case providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that can treat 50 plus infections, actually 60. They don't know about the extra 10. Anyway, get yours today. You can get it at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, dudes, this is the one I've been waiting all week for because I've been excited about your project since I first heard it might even happen. It wasn't even like a thing yet. It was a, it was a, it might be a thing. So tell us the whole summer of cell story. Well, it is it is a good one. We um, we actually came together from different paths, but parallel paths to a certain extent. Um, we oh, sorry, you're not up... you're not you're not allowed to say parallel paths. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bad Continue. choice of words. Um, <laughs> we were going down the same streets of sorts. Yeah. Um, Jared was uh, doing a bunch of shooting. He started shooting before and around the reverse boycott. Both of us started seeing this movement happening. I, I'd actually say we both started seeing it happen kind of even at the end of last year, beginning of this year, that a lot of the fans were getting upset with the way direction that the ownership was going. Um, and there was starting to be a lot of talk online. A lot of people were, were starting to boycott games actively. Um, and then as we started getting into 2023, it definitely seemed to be picking up. And I think both of us were pretty interested in uh, where is this going to go? Um, Jared lives up in Sacramento, so he lives a little closer on down in Los Angeles. Um, so we we started both focusing on, you know, the movement and kind of like, well, I wonder where the story is going to go. And then, of course, with the announcement of the reverse boycott and then the next day with Las Vegas um, being announced, it uh, it really, you know, started this whole whole movement full on. Um, and it was, it was, you know, it was tough for me, at least. I, I think Jared was the same way, but cause we're both lifelong A's fans. Um, and for me, I mean, I couldn't even talk about it for a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, couldn't right. talk about it with family, friends, like people were texting me and I was ignoring it. It was, it, it hit me emotionally pretty hard. And I was, I was pretty upset personally. Um, and, and didn't know if, the documentary, if this idea of making a documentary was like a smart idea anymore, because, you know, I don't really want it to end in this sad way where my team goes to Vegas. Um, Jared, on the other hand, is one of the more uh, optimistic human beings I've ever met. And uh, he he likes to say, Jared, what's your favorite saying? Uh, about when, the, when you're coming to the end of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, and you're down there's still a chance you could still come back and win it. And I've seen the A's do it enough times to make me think it's still going to happen. You just uh, described my entire dating life. I want you to know that you did that in one <laughs> sentence. Yeah. So like I, I was working, I, cause I was down in LA for about 20 years or so. I grew up in the Bay area in Concord and then moved down to LA was working in film industry and right before I moved back up to Sacramento, I was helping on a a project. It was a similar documentary, short documentary for a school down in L.A. to try and get funding. And I was hired to edit that one. And it ended up winning the school like two hundred fifty million in state funding to rebuild their high school. And wow. so my thought was the A's started having their stuff with the stadiums like, well, did that one. I like this team. Let's, let's see what happens. No response. And that was like, 
I, that was when I thought the A's needed the city to be convinced. And then I was coaching my kids T-ball team. And that's when the, the news came out about the move to Las Vegas. And there's a lot of people like, Oh, it's not going to happen. And I read one line in the document that said binding dependent on agreed upon terms or something to that effect. And I was like, yeah. that sounds is, as solid as all of the other things that they've been doing. And then sure enough, two weeks later, it was a new location. I'm like, see, it's so I was like, people were so convinced. And I had this like hints, like, I don't think this is the end. Um, but then that's when the reverse boycott happened. I got tickets, went to that game. And after the game, I, I think I posted on Twitter and said, all right, I'm going to stop asking permission. I'm just going to make something. So I started trying to line up interviews and, uh do of that and uh gabe was talking similar or down the same street i look at it was we were going towards the same goal but we were starting at different ends and he was yeah. starting at one end and that was going to be my end goal and i was gathering footage and then we just kind of met in the middle and it just made sense like let's partner up because you've got that legwork done on that end i've started over here let's do this together and try and tell the story the best we can Maybe exactly. it was like so, one of you had chocolate and the other one had peanut butter. It worked out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Jared, Jared was getting out front, getting some great shots, getting great interviews. And then for me, I was focusing more on getting producers aboard, getting production companies involved, trying to come from the, you know, the Los Angeles side of, of getting it professionally done. Um, and we started talking when we found out about each other. And we're, you know, at first we were like, well, let's not step on each other's toes. Let's just, you know, let's help each other as much as we can. And then we just kept talking and it was like, we're, we're on the same page. Like we know yeah. we're, we both have, it's funny. We both have similar backgrounds. We have similar ways in which we've gotten into the business um, and very similar ways to in which we want to tell this story. And so we realized we could both be assets to each other. And so we decided to combine our teams and we're both now co-directing this film. Um, so we did a big shoot. I mean, Jared had already done some shooting. He'd done some interviews um, that are part of the video that you'll be showing at the end um, and uh, did a, a shooting at the reverse boycott and a couple other games. And then I came down in September and we did a full crew. So we had a couple cameramen, a producer, sound people um, doing, doing a high end shoot of the last week of the season. Um, so Jared and I were working hand in hand during that week. Uh, to get more interviews, but also start following the fan base. I think a big part that we want to get out of this is uh, out of this documentary is, is following the fans. It's a story about the fans and we really want it to be as active as possible. So we're trying to, we wanted to get it while it was still happening. So we really, uh, you know, once we saw the end of the season coming, it was like, we got to just got to go for it. Um, so we, at that point uh, didn't have a production and we still actually don't have a production company involved um other than which, our own. <laughs> other than our own so we did some crowdfunding to put that budget together um the issue we ran into with companies and i, I still think very strongly that we will get a company involved um in the next sure. few months but uh a lot of companies we started going for sports companies um that's what we were marketing the documentary to thinking what like and they I, would get it because they already speak the language they would get it because they're 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 fans they you know it's a great story yeah. everyone knows it's a great story it's been you know in sports illustrated espn everyone's talking about it this year um so we thought that would be the market to do it the issue was that a lot of those places were scared of mlb though the most of those places came back and said it is a great story we love it but we lose licensing if we do this story yeah. we you know for any current docs we're doing and possibly future docs it's tough to get licensing from mlb and if they hold any grudge against you for doing something that they see as anti-mlb even though that's not what we're intending it to be we're just mm -hmm. following the fan stories but um that is the concern that's been the concern from that that angle so now our next moving forward uh coming up in the next couple of months we'll be marketing to more documentary companies that deal with human interest stories and and personal stories because really in essence that is what this is going to be um you know we're oh, aware no that doubt. We're probably no doubt it's it's not going to be a baseball film we're not going to see a whole lot of baseball because we the mlb probably won't license it to us <laughs> to be completely honest so um you know this is a film about the fans and it's about Unless what they've done 
Unless, Unless Emma, we would like to license it to us, we're totally okay with that. And we'll work <laughs> with you. Just saying. And actually, yeah. we have said this. There is still room here for MLB to be the good guy in this. They yep. still can be the good guy. The owners I, can be the good guys in this story. Um, they can come out I the heroes in the end. Um, so you know, and if that is the case, then hey, we'll, well, we are. We'll, we're obviously we're getting we're getting close. We're getting very close mm -hmm. to the MLB owners meetings. Yes. Yeah. A week away now. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I would, th I would think the challenge for you guys is because you're, you're, you're following something that's happening. It's unfolding in real time, as opposed to going mm -hmm. back and doing a documentary about something historical. For example, yeah. the Reggie doc that you guys were both, I think you're both involved in, right? I was involved uh, Reggie in Reggie Jackson. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. well, fantastic by the way, but, you know, it's historical for the most part. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. this is different because you don't even know yet what's around the corner because nobody really does. And yeah. I would think that chasing something that's sort of a, a can being kicked down the road is an awful uh, tough task for you as filmmakers. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think, I think for both Jared and I, uh, we both have a background in docs and both have done docs both, on the like the producing directing side but also on the editing side and a lot of the times we're given stuff that we don't know the story until we really sit with the footage and live with it for a while i mean i've had at least three doc three feature docs that i've i've done where the director would come to me and be like i think we have a story here it's it's cool for this this is what i like about it, this this and this but here's all the footage Just see what you can do and it's really like okay here's the story here's the arc okay here's here's where you can see it uh starting and ending and, and, and all the ups and downs in between. So I think both of us are pretty, uh, pretty excited about the opportunities that something like this gives us. Cause we, we've seen how many ups and downs have already happened. And even since being involved, we've seen, um, a lot of twists and turns in the story and been part of it. Um, and, you know, I think the thing at the end of the day is like, we're telling story about the fans who, we honestly love, I mean, these are just amazing people. All the people that we have been following, all the people that are a part of this movement are just really great people. Um, and we want to tell their story and we want people to see how in, intertwined baseball is in their lives, not just with uh, their families. Um, I mean, I know for both Jared and I, we grew up uh, watching baseball. Our parents took us to baseball games. I'm, I'm a third generation A's fan. My grandma was a big A's fan. So, you know, uh, it, it's been a big part of my family life, Jared's. And I know for a lot, almost all these fans, they grew up with that game being a, yeah, a part of their family life. Um, and not only that, a lot of these fans, some of their best friends are, are other fans. Um, you know, it's, it, it brings them their friendships together. And it, another thing that I think we really want to focus on is it brings the community together in a, in a big way. The Oakland community is really, you know, there's a heart of the A's in the Oakland community. And if you tear that away, it's going to be, it, it's heart, it's really heart wrenching to, to even think about um, right. what that does. Sure. Um, now, and there's a reason, by the way, that we're not, I know you've put together this film, uh, kind of a mini uh, video that you've sent on to Major League Baseball's ownership, which is brilliant. We're going to play that later uh, because truthfully, I can't handle it emotionally. I will absolutely start crying like a little baby so i'm gonna wait and that'll be the last thing we show you because i'm gonna have to tap out at that point i want to though get to the sizzle reel the one that you did right at the very beginning but before we do that let's talk about a different kind of sizzle that's the sizzle that you get when you're starting to feel like you should when everything's working the way it's supposed to but sometimes the truth is it just doesn't and you know we spend a lot of time talking about baseball and we get fired up together and we talk about who should play? Who should sit? Who should start? Ruiz. Who should uh, always Ruiz? That's the answer to that question. But no, we, we do. We talk about baseball a lot, but I'd like to just on a more personal level tell you that I care about you as a human being because kind of like we've been talking about, we're all sort of a family here. And so with that in mind, if you and the fam get ready to hit the road, you're on extended travel, maybe you got a business trip and you start to not feel well, you've probably been there where you're trying to find a doctor on the road. Uh, it's it's not any fun at all. Your insurance sometimes is an issue. Well, what Jace Medical has done is they've been able to put together what they call the Jace case. Well, first of all, it rhymes, so that's cool. But secondly, it could really make you feel better in a hurry because it's already been put together specifically for you. 
through medical professionals. They'll get on the phone with you, do the consult, make sure that you get this medicine delivered to you personally, uh, professionally from a pharmacist, licensed pharmacist. You have that at the ready so that when an emergency comes around and it can, you're covered, my friend. And that is the main thing too. Also, by the way, if ED is an issue for, for you or for somebody you know, I want you to know too that Jace has already figured out a way for you to be able to take care of that. Uh, they've got the generic versions of Cialis and Viagra and um, uh, what's the new one called? It's called Ravashi. All of that, they've done a partnership with the people who make that. So you're able to get that as well as part of your Jace case. No shame in that game. All right. So a verified customer actually said this about Jace. Thankful for the service. Supply chain issues caused my problem. And thankfully, I was covered. That's what we're talking about. Jace Medical. They want to save you some money too. Locked on. Yeah, that's the promo code you want to use, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. When you go to jacemedical.com, use that promo code, and they'll give you 20 bucks off today, okay? It's all from our friends at Jace Medical. Make sure you check them out. All right, so when I first got a taste of the documentary, um, Summer of Cell, which, by the way, I do have to give you props. I understand it's a little bit of a play on Summer of Soul. So I don't know which one of you thought of that. It actually... It you know, we can't from, even take <laughs> we yeah, can't I, even I, take credit for it. <laughs> I believe Paul of Last Dive Bar coined the phrase "Summer yeah. of Cell," and that was yeah. right before the Unite the Bay series, right? I believe so. Yeah. Those yeah. guys are they're they're. I, well, we'll talk about them in a minute as well in the '68s. But right now, let's go to that original sizzle reel. Which, if you watch this and you're like me or you like these two guys, we grew up in the Bay Area, and the A's are basically an extension of our DNA, check this out. Welcome to game two of the 1973 World Series. The National League champions, the New York Mets versus the American League champions, the Oakland A's. We've had five gorgeous days of California October weather in the Oakland Coliseum. Something I've learned through tragedy, loss, and even triumph is the road traveled to those inevitable destinations is paved with memories filled with love and joy and tears of all kinds. From the arrival in 68 to our triplets in 72, 73, and 74. Oakland has won the World Series! The unforgettable season in 89, the images. The emotion. There's been countless iconic moments that you have all shared together. And then we have all been lucky enough to experience together at the ballpark. Coco, it's a base hit to right field. Smith the third up the ball. Bobble the drive Garcia, and the A's have won it. And I wanted you folks to know just how much I love and appreciate you. Swung on, fly ball, deep right field, gets on it again! I am so terribly sorry, and please know that my heart is with yours. Is this the beginning of the end for the A's in Oakland? The team announcing a departure last week, shocking not only the city, but all of the Bay Area. What now looks all but certain the team will be leaving for Las Vegas. We're going to walk on this racist power structure, and we're going to stay to the home. This group of fanatics turned protesters Friday night, demanding the sale of the athletics. We have too much history for this owner, John Fisher, to just move us out. No. As the A's continue to negotiate with Nevada to move the team to Las Vegas, Oakland fans will hold a reverse boycott. A reverse boycott. Reverse boycott. Reverse boycott. There's something happening tonight in Oakland that is mortifying for baseball. To show Rob Manford and John Fisher that the issue is not the fans in Oakland, the issue is the owner in Oakland. There's money there? 
there's loyalty there, and you are the only game in town now. You really could be rooted in Oakland. But instead, what happened was the greatest scam that baseball or professional sports has seen in years. The uh, crowd getting very loud at the Coliseum. Man, oh man. Little hairs. Okay, so here's the thing. Even if you aren't like we are all from that, we, we can totally relate to that experience because we, we have lived it. Even if you're not, if you're from outside of that and you see this and you heard some of that there uh, with DA and, and with David Sampson and people that have reacted around the country, how can the Major League Baseball owners not also see what we just saw? This isn't Brooklyn. When when the Dodgers left, yeah, there was there was you know some feedback and people were upset, but it never got to this level. When the Expos left, they were already owned by Major League Baseball and they moved to Washington. It was barely a ripple. This is unlike anything. The only thing I can, and I don't know if you guys feel this way, but the only thing I can compare it to is the Cleveland Browns when they moved, where literally the city as a whole wept and shook their fist at the NFL and said, this is not right. This needs to change now. The team still moved, but the identity stayed behind. The, the uniform stayed behind. The logo stayed behind. And the spirit stayed behind. So the Browns have been reborn. I don't know if that's our eventuality. Again, none of us really know how this ends. But I'm just struck by the deafness that seems to me to be Major League Baseball, the other owners. I'm not hearing an owner just step right out and say, this is bull. I can't allow this to happen on my watch. Not just no, but hell no. This is not going to happen. And I don't see that. So that just tells me that something else is guiding this process, and it's probably money. But um, maybe you maybe you have a different perspective or a different insight. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I find it funny you mentioned Cleveland Browns because that question was brought up um, a few years ago with Dave Cavill. And he mentioned the Cleveland Browns because he was like, oh, I was familiar with that. And, and it was like, it almost makes me wonder, is it like a revenge on <laughs> losing his team when he was growing up or whatever? But yeah, I've, I've actually heard him talk about that. Um, I don't know, as far as just the what's happening, I feel that there's definitely a lot of backroom dealing and politics probably involved. Uh, I I see news reports popping up all the time of like people finding documents or or loan paperwork or something um, that just reveals a whole different story. I I found it interesting back in September no end of July I decided to do a Google search just to see what would pop up of John Fisher net worth 2023. And since then, it's a site that I'm not sure how accurate it is, but with him being $2.2 billion net worth value, you do this search, the first thing that pops up on Google says, at least $428 million. And you're like, whoa, whoa. what? It's yeah. a massive drop. And they, re they report based off of the stock holdings he has in Gap and sure. the valuation and it's like been updated every month since of like, according to the SEC filings on this day, it's at least this, they don't say it like it's to total that, but it just makes me wonder if there's like a baseball poor element going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, no, you know, my wife, my wife is a CEO. She, she's, uh, she's been on that side of business for a long time. And she did pull me aside and say, listen, there's probably things that you don't even know about that are affecting yeah. all of this that have to do with business and have to do whether he got his money from his parents or not. It doesn't matter. It's his money. And mm -hmm. I don't think that he got through the pandemic unscathed. I think making, making payroll and all that. So there is a slight amount of sympathy to that part of it. But then at this point, I just say, well, then bring in some partners and still you visualized this dream make it happen. Why all of a sudden duck and run to Las Vegas? Why did we go from one location to another? I know the answer as it relates to the wild, wild west spot. You guys know that that was, that was really a union call. The union said to the athletics, the people you're about to get this land from, we're not okay with. We're the culinary union. We're the strongest union in Las Vegas. We're going to make your road really bumpy and you're going to have a hard time getting your close to $400 million 
if you don't think about that before you commit to this, boom, they're in a new location over there at Tropicana in Las Vegas. Now they're renting and it's only nine acres and it's a postage stamp and they're not even going to own the land. So what the heck, what happened? I mean, that, that is the thing, you know, a, a lot of people I think have been that we've been talking to have been saying the same thing that it does seem like the, the pandemic really threw this off. A lot of people do believe that when before the pandemic, pre pandemic, that he did have the funding to do this, you know, real, uh, real estate and um, especially commercial real estate was still good back then. Uh, since then it's really dropped down. Um, and so there, I think there are a lot of reasons why he, I don't think he can afford it. I, I don't think he can afford what's in Oakland, but to go with what you were saying, what's weird to me is, okay, well, if you're going to go down to a, a nine acre lot, why not just do that in Oakland? Like it, it, we can do that. We can still do that at Howard terminal and we can do it for much cheaper. You don't have, I mean, Oakland has still a ton of money to give you to do that in Oakland. And we're a lot further along in the process in Oakland than they are in Vegas right now. So it, it's bizarre to me that that it, it almost feels like he doesn't want to admit that what he, he that he doesn't have the money to to do that anymore. It's almost, you know, like, I don't know, maybe Bale, he's embarrassed about not. I don't know how a billionaire thinks, but I, my guess is there's something about keeping an ego and keeping uh, himself looking good that the move to Vegas doesn't show as much of a loss in in revenue or income for well, him. If, if this is looking good, I'd hate to see what looking bad looks like. I really <laughs> would. Um, okay, back to the documentary. I'm so pumped about this. And I know that, like we said, it's a bit of a moving target. Uh, how do you spend your next at least month or so? What are, what are the plans? So, yeah, we have a pretty exciting uh, week ahead. Um, you know, we did a big shoot in September at the end of the season. Um, and now we are going to, uh, we're gearing up for another big shoot starting this weekend um, into next week. You know, next week's going to be the owners' meetings. Uh, we are following a lot of fans through that process, so I uh, believe that we are actually going to be going out to Arlington um, with some of the fans, and we're going to try to uh, find some owners and and give them our pitch. I mean, you know, we're we're going to go about about this in in as kind of a way as possible. We're not going to be yelling at them or uh, you know protesting or anything like that we're going out there to try to show them we care about our team we have we have gifts uh set up for them in fact um uh, one of the things that we and the city of oakland just did this last week um was uh put together gift boxes for all the owners so um there's a box now going to the different owners with a custom card custom holograph card made by one of our fans in the fan base for each of the owners which is i mean super dope cards um, with a little pitch on the back of it saying why we we're hoping that they can vote no on relocation. But we also have hats from Oaklandish and the Oakland 68s, the boxes, the postcards are all really cool designed by Last Dive Bar. Um, and then the video that you're going to be showing at the end is, is a combination of work um, from ourselves, Jared especially, and um, Dylan and Gabriel Hernandez, who do a lot of um, video documenting of both the Oakland A's and the San Francisco Giants. Um, so we have a really awesome Bay area team that's come together to put this video together. So the owners are also getting that on a DVD and on a flash drive and a personalized letter from the mayor as well. Um, pitching why, why she wants to keep the A's in Oakland, why it's important and how far along that they actually are to try to, to counteract some of the, um, arguments that, uh, Manfred has been giving for the last couple months about blaming it both on, um, the city and also on attendance levels, which, is yeah. not really fair in either Ridiculous. respect. Yeah. 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 So do you, um, do you think yeah. that those boxes that uh, Mayor Tao took to Seattle around the all-star game, those files, do you think those mm -hmm. all got delivered like they were supposed to be? <laughs> I, I, it's not on the record, but I had a conversation with her. Was it Tuesday? But her speculation was that they probably tossed them in a trash can for all she knows. Unbelievable. She did her best effort. And that's one reason why you post things on social media now, public record. Yeah. A, if you show that this is what we did, we dropped them here. There it is. And they it spreads. The, the owners go, hey, I never got that document. Where is it? And so there's a little bit yeah. of accountability that you put on people if you share a bit of it of what you've done 
but there's also that fine line of being respectful and showing yourself as a a, a good partner in negotiations and stuff and so um I know I feel like uh, Mayor Tao is walking that line pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. She chooses her times when to be public and then is respectful at the other time. So, yeah. um, and she's, she has a huge passion for the A's and like I heard her story on uh, her growing up with the A's and how that affected her family. Um, so it's more than just the fans it, it goes into the government as well they're yeah. doing their best to preserve that history yeah, i that love uh, i love a, i love how you guys took the the hologram cards on the flip is the whole here's why you should vote this way <laughs> so as cool as that card is there's no way they're throwing that away so exactly. it's like that's that's a forever <laughs> reminder it's like if there's anything their... <laughs> in that if there's anything in that box they're reading it is that card right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you bonus. can't separate the two so it's like <laughs> no. it's beautiful and i also like the fact that you you have enough knowledge of knowing that you know ownership some of these guys are uh are and women are up there in years and so uh you've given them you've given them a dvd given them a link you've given them a qr code I understand you even have a VHS videotape version if they absolutely have to have it. So yeah, yeah. If you need it. <laughs> if you need it, we can do that for you. If, if you'd like, we can arrange a private screening for you at your house. You can do a live yeah. performance of it, whatever they want, we're, we're there for. <laughs> Puppet show, yeah. whatever you're into. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to be busy. I mean, the answer to my question is that you've got a lot on tap in the weeks and yeah. months to come. If you had to make a prediction, and I hate to – Put your feet to the fire but i'm gonna do it if you had to call this meaning next week's activities do the owners vote for or against relocation or do they table it and vote later i have some jared you want you, you want you sure. want to start with the optimistic side or sure sure, <laughs> sure. um well from the last time i was doing something to trying to get some uh, get anything approved or whatever it took them it, obviously they had all their documents and paperwork in order but they made their decision within 24 hours uh to approve it um so i'm going off of that i've got two scenarios is one based off of the current uh gm meetings that have been happening that got canceled because of a virus spreading um i wonder that that's at play is like did that spread to ownership offices and they have to cancel for that. That's the case. Good luck A's uh, or it's a zoom, a zoom vote. Um, True. The, my, uh, my optimism is we'll get at least eight no votes. Um, I would not be surprised if we get like nine or 10 no votes. Um, but wow. that's just my optimism because I feel like I can tug at heartstrings enough to change someone's mind based on, hey, you are human, act it. <laughs> so well, that, I mean, that gets back to what I said earlier, which is yeah. how can you not see this or or hear mm -hmm. it or feel it? There, to me, you'd have to be, you know, Mr. Burns on The Simpsons to not let this or the Grinch, mm -hmm. you know, to get to you at that level, which is why we're not going to show this thing until the very end, because it's yeah. there. You can't escape it. It feels that way. Yeah. Are you that, are you just that cold and callous that you can't understand mm -hmm. what you're doing? You can still get a baseball team in Las Vegas. This has never been about putting Las Vegas down or telling yeah. them that they're inferior, exactly. you know, yeah. and believe me, I, I live here now I'm in this city yeah nobody's jumping up and down about the fact that the Oakland A's are coming here. You do hear people saying, Hey, it would be cool to have a stadium. It'd be great to have a major league baseball team. Truthfully, they're Dodger fans, if anything. So mm -hmm. I, I think the fact that they could have their own team like the golden Knights, like the aces, even though the aces came from another place, they changed their name. They had a new identity. If that happens here, I think it's going to be much uh, better received then if the A's come here with all the baggage and all the negativity that's already been out there, and we have hearts too, believe it or not, when we're not in the casino, we have hearts. Okay. Yeah. When we're not watching F1 or, or the Super Bowl, we have hearts and, uh, and we have slot machines in every single store, just so you know, but besides <laughs> that, we, we can see 
that, look, that team means something to this community. And there's almost a guilt that should accompany or maybe even does accompany the idea of taking what's yours. This isn't the Raiders. This is a different kind of scenario. And I think you guys have just done a, I mean, all I can say is just a marvelous job of putting that out there. Like you said, your story is a story about people. It's about a community. And it's it has nothing really to do with Las Vegas or MLB yeah. or any of that. It has to do what what it's like to have, I could just tell you in my example, which would be, I you know lived at 74th and MacArthur. I was a 57 AC transit bus ride away. It took me 15 minutes to get to the ballpark. And there was some heaviness going down in my own home that no kid should have to experience. But when I walked through those gates and I saw that green grass and I heard Roy Steele and I saw Joe Rudy and Reggie Jackson and Campy Campanaris and Catfish Hunter. And I watched that team grow from being pretty good to really good to winning World Series. There was a pride that enveloped you that I have now passed on to two, two generations. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a great point to say about Vegas. And that's something that we have uh, reiterated and something that I think all A's fans honestly have been saying, I don't know anyone who's an A's fan who has belittled Vegas, who has said they don't deserve a team who have talked bad about the people that live there or the, the fandom that is there. Um, I think there's sometimes comparisons between media markets and stuff like that, but that's all technical stuff. I mean, really for the most part, the, the big thing is that they do deserve a team. I think they do. And they deserve their own team. They deserve an expansion team. It would be a great place for an expansion team and expansion teams have done very well there. Um, both their, their hockey team and the aces, the triple a team, fantastic, uh, turnouts. The for aviators. Those. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, fantastic turnouts for both of those teams. Um, that was our, that was my kid's sorry, t-ball team. Someone took A's, so uh, I went, let's go the next in the line, and Aviators were the triple A. So we were Aviators yeah. last season. Yeah. Even with that Lamb so it, logo, good good for you. Yep. <laughs> so it, it, it really uh, is, you know, it's definitely not disparaging on on uh, on Vegas in any way, and, and it's not that the we don't feel they deserve the A's or anything like that. If anything, we don't want to put them through the hell that they think, that we think. Fisher will give them when he moves to their exactly, city. Exactly. Right. right. Um, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, the only reason all of us are going to stick with the A's is because it's, it means so much to us. Uh, and so we'll stick through some crappy years with an ownership team or with well, bad ownership to, to get. I think to that this level. community, I think this community understands that community. It's just on a human level. That's all it is. Yeah. Guys, I wish we had like two hours to do this. I'm already <laughs> I'm already looking at the clock here. We're already, you know, I'm going to hear from my boss. You know, he's going to say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, sorry. It's, you know, it's locked on A's and it's a, it's one of those things where once we get to talking about this, there's just, it's hard to, to condense it all. I want to play the video that you're, you, you sent to all the owners. They're all going to watch this and hopefully before they vote, they get a chance to really take it in and see what it feels like, what it means, and all of that. And uh, will you come back? Please, we'd love to. Absolutely, yeah, I, we could talk I'd about this for days. On. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> yeah. do that. Why don't we? Why don't we reconnect after the vote, if that's okay with Great. you guys? And that's maybe we can go. talk about how that affects Summer of Cell moving forward. Yeah. Okay. We'd love that. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Gabriel Perfect. Cullen and Jared Isham, uh, they are together, the two masterminds behind. Yes, I use that word, mastermind behind summer of cell which we can't wait for but thank you guys very much appreciate the time and let's watch this thing kleenex please Thanks, tomorrow Blaine. we'll be back with another episode of locked on a's your daily podcast on the locked on network comments go ahead and leave them and we'll see you right here tomorrow until then keep on swinging oakland a big crowd over fifty four thousand strong They say baseball is a game of failure, but we see it as a game of triumph. And those highs wouldn't feel so good without the lows, and the lows show us who we are. A community that builds memories together, laughing, cheering, crying, connecting with our heroes and our loved ones. We once played in our front yards envisioning the bottom of the ninth. 
Now we make family out of total strangers at the ballpark. This is what it's all about. And it's way bigger than just the game on the field. It's my privilege and honor to share with you the greatest game of all. I've literally felt that place shake, and I'm not talking, you know, 89 Earthquake Candlestick Park shake. I'm talking the fans are so loud that the whole place is vibrating. It's an amazing feeling. The first game that I attended at the Coliseum when I was 14 years old. And I remember going to games with my grandpa the most and holding that really close to my heart because it's the ace and it's my grandpa. They've been the backdrop of so many fond family memories and walk-off wins and you know all sorts of things that happened at that building. Attended my first baseball game at the Coliseum in 1982. Going to A's games as a youth, my parents couldn't even speak English well. They would feel welcomed. It was a really fun time growing up being an A's fan. My family were raised as A's fans and that's what they were doing with me. My mom bought me my first set of season tickets. My first game one or two years old, and I remember it was like Looney Tunes Day. I just fell in love with the city of Oakland, the magic of the A's and the people, the diversity of the games are so much fun, just has kept me coming back. 1989, I remember that my mom mentioned that my dad was in Jack London to watch the game. That's in my first memories of, okay, A's. This is a multi-generational team it's more than just a game. It's a memory. I go on Twitter and I see this tweet saying, the A's have a binding agreement with Las Vegas. <laughs> it felt like a family member died. It's been a constant in my life. I've met some of the best friends in my life. They're pretty much family. It's civic pride, it's culture, it's revenue, it's jobs. It gives kids a, a place to spend their summers. My kids are in love with this team. And how can you let kids fall in love with a team and then relocate them? So why are we gonna continue to support this franchise when it could all just be taken away? If fans mean that little to them, then why be a fan? It has always been baseball's policy and preference to stay put. I feel sorry for the fans in Oakland. I do not like this outcome. I understand why they feel the way they do. I think that the real question is, what is it that Oakland was prepared to do? That there is no Oakland offer. By way of this letter and its attachments, I want to make it clear to you, MLB, the relocation committee, and the owners of the other 29 teams that Oakland very much had a specific and concrete proposal on the table. We had a detailed and mutually agreed upon plan and schedule. And after two years of negotiations, we were, I believe, extremely close to finalizing a deal with the current ownership of the A's. First, there most certainly is a site for a stadium in Oakland and detailed plans for that site. Second, it is not accurate statement that there was no offer from Oakland. Oakland has made the A's multiple offers over the last several years. All have been rejected, despite the fact that Oakland's current offer includes more money for both on-site and off-site infrastructure than the A's themselves requested. You know, had the A's just said, we want nine acres of Howard Terminal to just build a ballpark. I think it would be done by now. Like it would be under construction or done by here in 2023. You don't build a stadium based on the club activity alone, the community has to provide support. There is still a deal within reach here if you had an ownership group that wanted to reach that deal. The crowds, the turnout, the support for the team is a huge positive, reinforces my view that Oakland is a major league market. I remember the wild card game 2019. You know that that game was obviously sold out, Mount Davis was filled. And you see how quickly the fans have gobbled up every ticket in oh, this ballpark. It's unbelievable. How special is that for you when you see that? We just have a great fan base. I am compelled 
to address some of your recent comments about attendance. It's true that attendance has remained depressed in Oakland post-pandemic, but I don't think that would be shocking to anyone who has witnessed incredible underinvestment in the team during this period. As we saw in 2019, when the A's were competitive, the fans turned out. We've always been a very strong fan base. We've always supported the team. Don't tell me that there's no fans here. They didn't all just go away in four years. All of this that's happened within the last four years is really the boycott. I started seeing things turn in the wrong direction that night where I received the first phone call from Dave Cavill saying, it's going to leak, so I wanted to give you a heads up that we are going to announce a land deal in Las Vegas. Leaving this franchise with a stripped down roster, the lowest in payroll. There was a time when Oakland had some of the top payrolls in all of Major League Baseball, and now it always consistently at the very bottom. This lack of investment is, I believe, a disservice to the team, to the league, and baseball fans everywhere. Despite this chronic underinvestment, a near doubling in season ticket prices, and despite the ownership group making it very apparent that they were looking to leave, the fans organized something remarkable. The reverse boycott amply demonstrated just how deep the bond is between this team and this city. Frankly, the fans themselves did what the A's current owners have chosen not to do for the last few years. They packed the stadium. I think Stu Cleary said, well, why don't we just fill the Coliseum and just show them that we're actually here? Not going to games, while understandable, feeds the false narrative that the A's fans cannot support the team or will not support the team, somehow don't deserve a team, when I know that's not true. Despite everything the ownership has done to them, with lack of investment, with stripping down the roster, with trading away their best players, with ignoring them, just going away. And on that one night, they made magic. We've been in Oakland for 55 years, so fifth inning. I want for an entire bat, everyone to just silent, stand up silent, and then, then we'll do our thing. I was walking through the tunnel to 149 right field bleachers, and it was completely quiet. You just saw people start to stand up. Oh my God, it's working, they're doing this. Most time, every other time I've been in a quiet stadium like that, it was either like a moment of silence because someone died or like this was a critical play and your team just gave up a home run or something, right? But this was so different. These aren't like paid actor fans who are just showing up for one night. This is what you actually have. And this could be normal. This shouldn't be some special occasion. This should be reality. This could be reality. Oakland had done so much to try and make this work. Man, this shit matters. Like, we matter. We matter to each other. The city matters to us. And if the A's remain rooted in Oakland with a committed ownership team, I can promise you the fans will keep showing up. It, it would be a positive if, if anyone votes no. Man, this matters. This matters. Like, it's part of being human. 